Hey, what's up? This is Urban Flavor TV. We're down in Brixton with a very talented uh, Potent Whisper and Wulu. How long have you guys been um, collaborating music together for? The Boom Bap Bounce, which is something we're working on at the moment, um, is actually only our second collaboration together with regards to music. Um, our first collaboration came with the single Sacrifice, um, which we dropped... When did we drop that? A couple of months ago or something? Yeah, probably about three or four months ago. Um, so with regards to musical collaborations, that's um, where we're at with regards to that. However, um, I've known Wulu from college days, um, and if you're looking at collaborations with regards to a lifestyle, with regards to an um, exchange of energies, we've been collaborating together since I was 18 or 17 yeah, eight. or 18 or something. Yeah, that's around that yeah. age. I mean, straight up, it was like a long time coming for us to like actually put out something. Because when we've made like half tracks and we just started things and ideas for the longest time. But like, we, you know, it's all about time and it's all about making sure everything that you put out is to a, it's to a standard, do you know yeah. what I mean? And obviously we were collaborating with We Are Dubist as well, which was the Heavy Bass Collective, which we originally, um, you know, collaborated yeah. with. Um, yeah, yeah. There was originally 11, 11 members of us. Um, we're down to seven members now due to life circumstances mm -hmm. and musical differences yeah, and different different avenues of life mm -hmm. and walks of life. Um, so yeah, we started with We Are Dubbist effectively. Yeah. Um, then we produced um, Sacrifice earlier on this year, 2012. The Boom Bap Bounce, which, which we're about to drop 2012, 10th of September um, is the latest thing. Um, it's going to be a free digital release as is much of my work at the moment. Um, free download at potentwhisper.com and boombapuk.com. Um, the Boom Bap Bounce came about from um, inspiration, drew inspiration from the Boom Bap Festival, which it serves as the official anthem for. Now, the Boom Bap Festival um, is the UK's first um, large scale UK hip hop festival in an all round context. Obviously, um, graffiti, break dancing, I'd imagine, um, rapping, every, everything, you know, mm -hmm. the whole hip hop lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, Highly significant event in UK music. Um, it's exactly the type of organisation that um, the UK community needs. Um, for a little while now, the whole community has been growing some some big momentum, um, and the Boom Bap Festival is what I what I would probably see as the assembling point for everybody now. The track itself um, has a genre switch midplay, so it starts off as a hip hop production, hip hop vibe. Um, and then halfway through, it builds up, bridges into um, drum and bass. The general vibe of the track is so basically, hip hop is what, what um, Boomer Festival is about, mm -hmm. but, what, but the jungle part um, um, signifies what came, what, what the kind of influence mm -hmm. that um, hip hop music had on the UK music scene. Mm -hmm. So when would you first say that you had your calling um, to make music? Um, when I was at Richmond College, when I was around about 18 years old, um, for some reason we were doing some type of radio, remember that radio project we were doing whereby um, we had to write something as a radio script, I believe it was something to do with script writing and that yeah. type of thing. Um, so I did, um, I found my place in that project by writing an acapella um, which turned out to be a political a cappella, mm -hmm. um, and that was at exactly the same stage as Wulu introduced me to the works of Immortal Technique. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, the fusion of the project, the radio project, and mm -hmm. finding out about the works of Immortal Technique um, led me to that decision of and that realization mm -hmm. that hip hop is an amazingly powerful tool, mm -hmm. um, and that's where I decided that my um, previous poetry experience, spoken word experience, could then move me forwards um, into hip hop and using it as a weapon to achieve positive change. Uh, I've just been doing music since I can remember because my mum was a dancer, my dad's a musician, I'm a twin, so it's always kind of been a thing where if whatever kind of ca catches on from my parents, it kind of stems between me and my brother. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of like been knocking between instruments for years and then I got into beat making when I was about 15. And then went to college, and then basically met the school. For my boom bap, so all aboard the new map. But you visit bought the proof when they thought we couldn't do that. I'd say the message in your music is very strong um, and very inspiring as well, which is wicked because um, I know that young people are very influenced by music. Um, you also work alongside a lot of young people um, in a 
uh, media-based charity aimed for young people and music. What advice would you have for any young people who are aspiring to become artists, um, get into the music game? Good question. I think the term music game is very interesting, very interesting term to use, you know what I mean? Um, myself personally, I've never really viewed music as um, a game. Um, it's always been a mindset, uh, a way of life, a mentality. Um, however, the analogy of, I guess, the music game being that, you know, you have to play the game, suck dick, cut people out of the game, undercut them, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, Almost a rat race, right? Exactly. Well. Um, and that's what I would say primarily is to basically decide whether or not you want to make music um, as a spiritual journey or as um, as I, perhaps I do to um, make change in some sort of political, social context or whether it's to make money. Um, both, you know, both avenues, um, it's down to you. You know, both avenues are acceptable, it's up to you what you want to do, but really to try and decide where you are at from the beginning. Um, but if you do take the route of trying to make music um, to make money, I guess just to remember the word integrity. Just don't rush, do you know what I mean? And don't take, and, and don't watch no one. Like, you know, listen to music that inspires people and that, that inspires you to, to make music or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Cool, that's fine, you know what I mean? But I wouldn't say to watch another person and compare yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're making music for the music, um, for the vibrations, um, for the lifestyle, for the energy, mm -hmm. um, then it's not a game, it's not about being a better rapper. It's about longevity, mate. Of course, exactly. Longevity, mm -hmm. keeping it consistent, mm -hmm. um, keeping um, the quality and the work rate consistent, mm -hmm. um, and doing you. Um, I think in general, like one of the realisations I've come, I've come to recently is that, I mean, I'm very much like, you know, if you're making music or you're making specifically hip hop music, mm -hmm. then don't be talking about cream pies and, you know, rolling around in trolleys and them types of things. But what I have come to understand and realise is that there are other, um, you know, subgenres of hip hop. There are other things that rappers like to rap about apart from politics, apart from love, apart from unity. Mm -hmm. um, and what I've begun to understand partly through working and chilling with Wulu is that it's not all about that. There are, you know, there are other avenues of hip hop and although it's not personally what I'm on, it's not, it's not the vibe I'm on, I'm still willing to sort of accept it a little bit more, take it in. Mm -hmm. um, so with regards to making music in general, I can kind of understand the ego thing, although I don't agree with it, I can understand it. Mm -hmm. With regards to hip-hop music, although I do understand um, what perhaps Wulu might say to me, for example, about certain artists, mm -hmm. um, I do understand that now. I'm still on that one vibe, I'm still on hip-hop music, should be about fighting oppression, about freedom, emancipation, mm -hmm. um, and about unity, and about love, mm -hmm. you know? Um, music that discusses oppression doesn't always have to be depressing. Mm. Or music that discusses depression doesn't have to be depressing, you know? Mm. Um, there is a way to do it in such a way that it discusses it, addresses the issue, but also ups, uplifts the people at the same time. Yeah. Um, you know? Yeah. Music seems to be taking quite a big turn in this day and age with um, music internet channels popping up and establishing themselves. Also, you've got YouTube, which anyone can upload their music or videos to. Um, it's almost um, opening up. Um, the accessibility of music, um, which is great, but what kind of effect do you think it will have on music on a whole um, and maybe in the long run as well? As an artist, YouTube has definitely made me feel a lot more empowered to be able to um, release music, to be able to put music out there for the um, people's ears to just get a hold of at the click of a button, as they say, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, with regards to turning them views into sales, I'm not so sure that it's, you know, helping that much, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, yeah. the truth, the reality of the matter is that if you get a million views on YouTube, it doesn't equate to a million sales of your record, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think it's a bit of a seesaw, man, because you've got, like, the one side of it where the internet has opened up a whole different kind of music mm -hmm. with regards to if you want to get a music video on TV, it has to be a certain um, length and they can't have certain things in it, like, you know, smoking or swearing or anything derogatory or anything, it can't be on the telly, mm -hmm. unless, it's, unless it's like late, late, late night TV. But because of the internet, there's all, like, there, there are definitely people that are not exactly, not, not exactly making sales, but like, for example, there's groups out there that have been getting loads and loads and loads and loads of views, and through the way the internet has changed music, 
like things that become that like, like collection agencies like PRS, and then, like, you start to get um, royalties if you hit over a certain amount of views, mm -hmm. because I mean your music's still being played on in like a public way. Mm -hmm. If you want to kind of go into like royalties and all that kind of stuff, so there is like there can be money made a little bit, but you have to be hitting you know millions and millions of views. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, I think it's kind of a younger generation who are kind of not really giving. I'm not really giving a shit about what, what they're saying mm. and it's more just about whatever they want to say, putting it out for free, here's what I have to say, look at it. YouTube is very valuable um, in vlogs, um, behind the scenes videos, interviews, keeping um, the listeners, the fan base, whatever you want to call them, engaged in your music between the releases. So in that respect it's a very valuable tool, um, as I'm saying for myself I feel very empowered to have YouTube and also it's um, it's a good look with regards to people who aren't able to afford their own websites, um, you know what I mean? If I don't have five or six bills to pay somebody to make a very good website then I've got YouTube or you know a, in addition to my Facebook page or whatever it is, mm -hmm. YouTube is pretty much, you know, central hub for a lot of artists mm -hmm. in showcasing their music. Mm -hmm. um, and in that respect, it's obviously a very valuable tool as well. Hip hop, reggae, jungle. You can't refuse it. We're rocking them today. Thank you, Whisper, Rulu. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you both come down. Really good talking to you. Thank you so much for your time and your presence. Where can our viewers um, at Urban Flavor find out more about you? Suncloud.com forward slash Wulu or monsterplayground.bandcamp.com And for myself, everything is at postofwhisper.com You can check my YouTube channel out as well, which is battleamp1 um, Yeah, it's all there. Keep it locked mm.